Hi, it's Mark Item from Honu Trading with a weekly review for the week of July 10th, 2023. Remember, this is for educational purposes only. Job one is always risk management. You can follow me on Twitter at Honu Management, at Honu MGMT. And if you find this valuable, take a moment to like and subscribe. So it's a mixed holiday week, another inside week, and uh, the week in reviews, hey, who snoozed more, the Bulls or the Bears? The Biggies outperformed the Smalls a little bit this week, but as you'll see, not by much. Risk on remains in effect. Uh, financials really didn't give us any clues this week, and Q2 earnings season kicks off next Friday. So who snoozed more this week? Yeah, the tired bull or the tired bear? If we look at the weekly heat map, uh, you see it's very mixed. It's not a uh, green St. Patty's Day week or a red Valentine's Day week. There's a little bit of both. Uh, when we look at the last week, it was a bullish outside week. And if you remember our theme last week, uh, paraphrase, Thin Lizzy, the bulls are back in town. Well, this week turned out to be an inside week, yet we remained above the August 2022 highs, above the 415, 420 level that had been previous uh, resistance become support and above the rising anchored volume weighted average price uh, from the all-time highs. So zooming in a little bit, uh, we gave back a little bit on the week and last week I pointed out a divergence between uh, relatively equal highs uh, in price and lower highs in the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. Now that's still in effect, but I would still say unless and until we get lower lows in price below those August 2022 highs, then yet, no uh, divergence yet. So looking at the, the week, it was a mixed holiday week, um, half day on Monday, uh, day on Tuesday, and virtually unchanged uh, over those two days. Uh, then we got the ADP jobs report on Thursday that was, with apologies to my friends in Texas, it was hotter than Texas. And the market sold off hard, rallied back a little bit towards the end of the day, but net negative on that day. But from those lows after the U.S. jobs report on Friday that wasn't as hot, we rallied back and then unfortunately had an end of the day sell off. Uh, net new highs versus new lows on the week actually was very positive. Even though Monday was a flat day, Monday and Tuesday were flat days, there was 131 net new highs on Monday, 52 on Tuesday. And on a big down day on Wednesday, only 52 net negative lows. Uh, it's interesting, those two offset. And then 40 net new highs on Friday, even though it was a slightly down day. Uh, for the week, SPY was down 1.07%. And IWM was down 1.37, so a little bit worse. Although one thing I do want to point out with IWM, uh, it remains below the anchored volume weighted average price from the highs and below, well below uh, those August highs. So when we look at our equal weighted to cap weighted uh, measures, the RSP, the equal weighted S&P 500 relative to the cap weighted, uh, actually improved a little bit this week. Actually, they all improved a little bit this week, yet this is perhaps the most notable. Uh, MDY actually had the mid-caps, had the best week uh, of the year. So our risk-on, risk-off measure remains in risk-on territory, and uh, as always, a hat tip to Chris at Chivaco Capital. Uh, this is the S&P 1500. That's the 500 big cap, 400 mid cap, and 600 small cap combined versus the ETF that tracks three to seven year treasury bonds. Now we've talked for a long time about this is very clearly risk on when this measure, this relative strength of stocks versus bonds falls, that's risk off. When it rises, that's a risk on environment. Well, 2022, surprisingly, risk off. Then it went sideways for a long period of time, but broke out and we're back in risk on mode. Now we've noticed that the SPY was down on the week, but you're gonna see that the ETF was actually down as well. This is the five year treasury yield, which is in the middle of that three to seven year range. And we had Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was sharply higher. Well, as bond prices rise, bond values fall, and the uh, IEI was actually uh, down a quarter of a percent on the week. Turning to the financials, uh, uh, kind of a mixed week. XLF, uh, about the same place it was last week. We had the uh, what looked like an, uh, a breakdown to where we were headed back lower, but uh, a kick save and a beauty, and it came back uh, and really nothing on the week. And when we look at the financial sector heat map, uh, you'll see why. The big cap components of XLF, Visa and MasterCard are number two and three, uh, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, Bank America and Citi, uh, again, kind of mixed. When we look at the bigger banks, KBE, uh, it gained back some, again, basically a mixed week, but the smaller banks remain in rut row territory. Uh, they haven't really done anything terrible yet, uh, but they haven't broken back up either. Uh, part of the reason might be, look at the wild volatility in the two-year treasury on Thursday and Friday. Uh, interestingly, they wound up virtually unchanged from Wednesday's close, but wow, what intraday ranges. Uh, earnings season, uh, after a quiet week, kicks off for real at the end of next week. You have United Health, the largest uh, price component in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And then you get some of the big cap banks, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citi, and then State Street. So to sum up, uh, it was a mixed holiday week again, another inside week. Uh, who snoozed more, the bulls or the bears? Biggies outperformed a little bit in that they were down a little bit less than the smalls. Risk on remains in effect. Uh, financials didn't tell us much and earnings season kicks off next Friday. So have a great weekend, trade well, and manage risk. As my buddy Honu always says, small losers win.